Hey y'all, this is Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm and I want to talk to you a little bit in this video about how you can take problems and turn them into solutions on your homestead. Um, <clears throat> I've talked before, you know, my wife and I, it's not like we're these independently wealthy homesteaders who, um, you know, had, I don't know, fantastic jobs in the computer industry during the dot-com boom and then we took our all that money that we saved up or all that money that was pay, passed down from that wealthy great-great-grandfather and just bought our land cash. You know, we're the same as just about everybody else and the same as most homesteaders. We have a mortgage and we have bills and we still have some debt that we're working on. So how do you do things on the cheap? How do you turn, turn problems into a solution when you're on the homestead? Well, that's what this video is going to be a little bit about. I engaged on a project over the last day or so that involved um, taking a material that was growing on my property that I didn't really want growing on my property, using it for a use, ending up with the waste product. Now the waste product is a problem, so how do I deal with that? So here we go, and we're going to just talk a little bit about um, what I did and how it went, and I will... Um, this is going to be in a little bit, hopefully it's not too choppy, because I'm going to turn off the camera, flip it around, shoot some more video, and we'll see how this goes. All right, y'all. This is a plant that grows all over my property, and it is known as giant ragweed. Yes, when you're listening on the news and they're talking about how the ragweed is really high, and that's why people's allergies are going nuts, that's what this is. This is giant ragweed and it grows all along the, the, the moisture creek areas of my property. So I have all of this giant ragweed. Obviously I do not want something here that might kick off some allergies in my house. Um, it also really blocks views, things of that nature. So what am I gonna do with all this ragweed? Well, I found out the chickens absolutely love it. So if I hack down two or three of these and toss them in the chicken uh, run, they will eat those leaves completely gone. And it's great because it helps cut down on my feed. The chickens really love to eat this stuff. So I'm getting it off my property and I'm feeding my chickens. But the chickens don't eat the hard stalks. So what I end up with when I pull it back out of the chickens is I end up with dozens upon dozens of these long pole-like stalks that dry out to a fairly hard woody material. So I've got all these piled in a fire pit right here, but the problem is it is summertime in Central Texas. I'm under a burn ban until at least the uh, 30th of September, and that's only if we get some rain between now and then. So what am I gonna do with all this now? So I had a problem, I found a solution, but that solution created another problem, which is the waste product. So what am I gonna do with that waste product? I know, tomato cages. So I took a bunch of these and I cut them down into length and this is what I ended up with. All right, y'all, these are my lengths of branch cut to different lengths. Um, your lengths are going to depend on what you're building. I've got some seven footers here, some four footers here, and some two footers here. What this should give me is four separate uh, two by two tomato cages to hold <clears throat> these four tomatoes that are growing all over the ground because I was an idiot and I put something in the ground without infrastructure. And this is what I try to tell you all about. Get the infrastructure in place first because when I put these tomato plants in the ground, they were little bitty. They were maybe five inches tall. And I said, oh, it's going to be a couple of weeks at least before I need to put these things in any kind of a cage. That was like eight or nine weeks ago because I have been busy, y'all, and I've had other priorities that were more pressing than these tomatoes. Well, now my tomatoes are setting fruit like crazy. Look at this. Like crazy. And all of a sudden, <laughs> this became a really important priority. So... Again, get the infrastructure in place first. Don't get chickens unless you already have a coop and run. Don't get ducks unless you already have a place to put them. Don't get goats unless your fences are already secure. And don't bother putting tomatoes in the ground unless you already have some cages of some sort for them to grow in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build one off camera so that if I look like an idiot, you don't see it. And then I'm going to come back and build one on camera. So I'll see you in just a minute. 
Hey y'all, so I actually don't have time to build another one tonight. I'm losing some light. <clears throat> it took longer than I expected just because you're tying all the corners. But I'm telling you right now, if, if you had help, you know, if, if one of my kids wasn't doing homework or if Jess wasn't at work right now, this is a 30 minute project. Because if you got somebody on both sides and you're both tying corners, this thing would go up really, really quick. Um, I gave it a good shake test and it seems pretty sturdy. I mean, for what you want, you know, because I mean, if we're just talking about wind, then, you know, you want it to have some flex for, to it. So I'm happy with it. Uh, could it be prettier? Yeah, of course. Um, but I wasn't looking for pretty. I was looking for functional. Um, straighter? Yeah. If the, I had another set of eyes to help, my, help me eyeball it across or if I really cared if it was super straight, um, I can access the tomatoes. The tomatoes can climb and bush up inside of that thing. And all it cost me was the twine, which I don't know how much I paid for because I've had it lying around so long. So I'm pretty happy with this. I don't know that I'm gonna build one on camera in front of you just because um, um, it, it will take me about 45 minutes. And I know I can scrub and go fast through it, but I mean, it's really simple. I, suck, I stuck six, seven foot stakes in the ground that I can probably cut off or I can go up another level. I ran these four foot stakes across the long way and these two foot stakes across this way and everything is just tied and twisted with twine. Wherever I could, I used these, um, these little hard leaf branches that were left on here uh, for, addition, for additional support. And, you know, I mean, as is, it stands, uh, if I get up here on top of the edge of the box. So I've got the bracing up to about four feet and I could take the bracing up as high as five and a half or six. So I can grow four to six foot tall tomatoes in here right now. I can let them hang over the, the, uh, the edges of those branches as they grow. And it didn't cost me anything. And this weed grows all over my property. So I'm actually thinking that next year we're going to have homemade pepper cages too. Um, get these in the ground while the peppers are just teeny tiny and let the peppers grow up inside of them. And I can make dozens upon dozens upon dozens of these for absolutely no money so i think this was a good way for us to turn a problem into a solution um if you have any questions drop them down in the comment box and i would love to hear more from you and um this has been chris with rockin 8 farm till i see you again be happy and live healthy